In iNav, does your altitude hold look something like this? And you really want it to look more something like this? Today I'm going to show you how to take away the shakes in your iNav altitude hold. So the first thing to understand is where is it coming from? Your quadcopter, really the shakes are coming from your props and the vibrations from the props. So depending on how good your props are and the vibrations of your frame and things like that, it's going to depend on where, you know, how severe those shakes are going to be. As with everything with flight performance, the best your mechanical can be, the meaning props, motors, and frame rigidity or stiffness, that's really the best thing to tackle first. Like for example, if you have bi-blade props to put on tri-blade props, or if you are running something like this, kind of the mini long range, just grab a bunch of different prop manufacturers and, and try them, HQ, Gem Fans, so on and so forth, some name brand stuff, and put those on there and see if that helps your issue. That's really the best way to tackle it because that's tackling it right at the source of the issue. Now with that, it's not the vibration of the props that is like causing jello and other things. It's that vibration getting to the accelerometer in the gyro. So there's two things in the gyroscope. One measures the angular rotational rate. So if I start rotating this like this, that's gonna measure that. And if I would do that at a consistent speed, it would tell me, hey, you're making you know, one rotation a second here if I'm doing that. And it's gonna be measured in degrees per second. The other thing it's measuring is the force of acceleration on the gyroscope. So in this scenario, it's gonna measure one G, it's gravity, pushing straight down. If I lean the quadcopter forward, now it's gonna still measure that one G, but it's not gonna be to the back end here anymore. It's going to be pointing straight down still. And you can see that just by plugging your quad into Betaflight or iNav and then just rotating on the desk. How does it know my quads at a certain angle? That is not the gyroscope that's telling it that. That's the accelerometer because it knows straight down is gravity. So it knows that if it's measuring that off to the side, that means the quadcopter is tilted because gravity is not going to tilt. However, that accelerometer is very sensitive, very, very sensitive to any vibrations, way more sensitive than the gyroscope for the rotational rate. So any vibrations for your motors, props, or frame, it is gonna pick those up big time. And of course, there's filtering on the accelerometer. However, you're not gonna see that filtering for the accelerometer in here. It's not under the PIDs filtering. This is all the filtering that puts on the gyroscope's readings. That's the degrees per second rotation. The accelerometer, uh, it's not in this one. Nor is it under the PIDs tab, under PID gains, and then down here. Don't be fooled. Some people might think, oh, this angular horizon strength and this low pass filter cutoff is 15. That's the filtering. No, that's not the filtering on the accelerometer either. Take a look at the filtering on the accelerometer. What we're going to need to do is go down to the CLI command and then just type in get ACC and then browse up to the top, scroll back up to the top. And you will see in here this ACC LPF Hertz 15. That's the filtering on the accelerometer. It just happens to be that same number we just saw there in the angle and horizon, but it is not the same variable. So don't be messing with that one thinking you're messing with this one. The other thing we're gonna see here is the filter type. So you can see here, it's a bi-quad filter. So if you've been in the industry for a little bit or playing with quads for a little bit, you know there's two primary low-pass filter types, a PT1 and then a bi-quad. And a bi-quad is a second order filter. This is a first order filter. So you can see in iNav here, we have the bi-quad filter is the strongest filter type, a second order low-pass filter. And that's at 15 Hertz, that's pretty low. So you can see how much vibration comes off the accelerometer that requires that filter to be the strongest and be so low. And associated with that, there's a lot of delay. There's like 15, 16, 20 milliseconds, something like that of delay on the signal because that filtering is, is so heavy on it. But nevertheless, that might not be enough filtering. Again, it's gonna, you know, mileage is gonna vary based on your props and everything else. So if you can get your mechanical setup to be as clean as possible, I wouldn't go in here and mess with this. But if you are like, this is as good as it's gonna get mechanically. I've tried a couple different props. I know my props are good. Um, some people with big rigs might even balance their props. And it's like, I still get the shaky jittery thing. How can I do this? Well, that's where you're gonna wanna come into here and make some adjustments. So the first thing you can do is just lower this uh, low pass filter value. What I recommend is trying five points at a time. So you can type in set and I just quickly copied in, copied that into my, uh, into my clipboard there. And then I would put this down at 10, hit enter and then type in save to save that. And then that will reboot the flight controller and have that new settings. 
as you may hear there. Now, of course, I would go and give this a fly and give that a shot and see how that looks. The other thing you can do is go down to like maybe five hertz, but you will get to a spot where that delay, you know, you're gonna double, it's not exactly doubling the delay. I have a filter calc tool that I will make a, a reference to a um, link down below. You can check out and you can type in uh, select by quad and type in and you can see what that delay is changing from. But you'll get to a spot where you'll see a lot of oscillation going on because the reference to straight down or the reference to gravity is so delayed that it just starts to induce it, this oscillation either when you make a move and you're using uh, either angle mode or horizon mode or position hold that you'll see this induced op oscillation after the move stops and it just takes a while. It's like, well, that used to not be there. Well, now my shakes are better, but then I start to have, the, well, again, it's better if you can handle it mechanically, but if you can't, that, this is kind of the trade-offs with it. The other thing you can try is as you get lower to like a 10 or a 5 hertz range, or I don't know that you'll be getting much lower than 5 hertz, you can try switching this to a, a PT1 filter type. Now, it is not going to filter out the high frequency noise uh, nearly as good as the biquad, but really it's the low frequency stuff that is these jitters, not the high frequency stuff. So I would offer that that doesn't matter. You really don't need to filter out the high frequency stuff. Uh, it's not going to cause issues with hot motors or anything like that, uh, that I've experienced, but um, just keep that in mind. And that will have the amount of delay. So as you're starting to move that low, uh, down, uh, you definitely want to be thinking, okay, let's try a PT1 filter once I'm down at like 10 or five and see if that's better. Now there's other things that can impact that smoothness outside of the accelerometer themselves. There's some other things, some other filtering things, there's some other tuning things, there's some other uh, angle level uh, strength things that uh, you should consider. But I'm going to wrap this video up with that. If you're interested in more of that advanced um, knowledge or tuning of that, I'm going to have a Patreon only video releasing right now. You can check that out down in the video description. That's kind of the benefits that I give to my patrons, kind of take it to that next level. Um, and, you know, hopefully that's the, the value that they see in supporting the channel. So if you're interested again in that, go ahead and take, uh, take a look at that link. And for just a couple bucks a month, um, you can get kind of that insider's perspective on some of this more advanced features. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you on the next one.